Now, the UN's Ocean Summit is uh, continuing in uh, the southern city of Nice. Over 90 countries are calling for a global treaty to restrict plastic pollution. Deep sea mining has also been in focus. And for more on this, we can go across to Antonio Kerrigan, who's covering uh, the event for us. Antonio, what's the latest? Well, as we've discussed earlier in the week, deep sea mining is on the agenda. President Trump of the USA, he wants to plow ahead, bypass the seabed authorities and exploit the resources of the deep seas. Scientific criticism is loud and clear at this conference. I'm joined by Dr. Diva Amon. Um, Dr. Amon, 66% of the world's oceans are deep seas. Um, however, most of us know nothing about them. They are completely unknown to us. You're one of the only people in the world to have seen uh, what those ecosystems look like. Paint us a picture. It is like nothing you've ever experienced before. As you said, it's an enormous part of our planet, and that means it is home to hundreds of thousands of species. Amazing biodiversity, everything from glowing sharks to blind white crabs that farm bacteria on their chest that they then eat to thousand year old corals. This is really a special place. And as you've rightly said, it is extremely underexplored. A few weeks ago, a paper came out that said 0.001% of the deep sea floor globally is what has been seen. That's how little we know. And yet we know this place is incredibly vulnerable. Those thousand year old corals, they do not deal well with impact. And that is why deep sea mining has really been on topic here. When we have heard um, Emmanuel Macron this week calling for further investigation into the deep seas, is that a gateway to exploitation down the line or is that necessary? Do we know what the impacts could be of this deep sea mining? Do we know enough already to call it quits or is this further investigation a gateway to something dangerous? That is a great question and really, really a question that so many are trying to answer. In my opinion, as a deep sea scientist, we absolutely know enough to know that this is not necessarily a good idea with the currently proposed technology and on the scale currently being proposed. This would not be a small scale venture if deep sea mining moves forward. We are talking about hundreds of thousands of square kilometers of the world's ocean, essentially where there would be irreversible damage in a lot of it. Those ecosystems will never recover, not on your, our generation timescales, not our children's generations. This is million year timescales. So really, there is a lot more work to do around can deep sea mining ever take place in a way that wouldn't harm the environment. Many of us are doubtful, but we do need to do more science to be able to say whether that is the case or not. But in my opinion, we also know enough to know that, hey, these are very special places and we should be going forward with absolute care because if we break it, it is highly unlikely we will be able to fix it. As you say, um, we know very little about, about the deep seas. Do they know about us? Have they already experienced the impact of human activity? I love that. Yes. So that is, again, a great question. Often I have explored, I've explored deep seas all around the world. And often we are going to places where no one has ever been before. We get down there and what do we find? Our trash. We find the marks of fishing trolls. There is no place on the planet where we have not touched and made an impact. And the deep sea, while it is out of sight, while it is out of mind, it is absolutely not out of our reach. Currently, there's climate change, pollution, fishing, and now with other potential extremely damaging industries on the horizon, like mining, really, we need to be turning our sights to the deep ocean to understand it more, know it more, value it more. Um, what do you say to those who say deep sea mining is a way of accessing those precious metals that are going to be essential uh, to the green transition? So, I mean, that is the main narrative we hear from mining proponents. But that energy transition, trying to solve the climate crisis by getting minerals from the deep sea, by undertaking deep sea mining, is like smoking to lower stress. We know the ocean is our greatest ally in the fight against climate change. It sequesters huge amounts of carbon. It absorbs enormous amounts of heat. And if deep sea mining moves forward on the scale upon which it is proposed, we know that that function, that service which it, provi which it provides, which keeps the planet habitable, it may be irreparably damaged. 24 uh, countries uh, have called for a moratorium. 37. 37. We've, OK, we've moved up. Excuse me. Um, is that enough? 
So yeah, so yesterday, I think the day before at UNOC, we saw four more countries join this call for a moratorium or pause, bringing the total to 37. Um, that is not yet enough, but in the first call came at UNOC 2 in Lisbon just three years ago. And in that three years, we have seen that number exponentially increase. So we are absolutely on the right track to protecting the deep sea. And we just need some more time to be able to, again, understand it better and value it. On the right track, that's good to hear. Thank you very much, Dr. Raymond. Back to you in the studio. Antonio, thank you very much for that. Antonio Kerrigan uh, joining us there from the UN's Ocean Conference underway in uh, Nice.